Welcome back. In the previous videos, which are linked in the description below, you learned how to set up the hardware and began to write code for our pendulum experiment. Specifically, you discovered how to turn on a diode laser beam and how to read data from a light sensor. In this video, you will write code to monitor the light sensor until the laser beam is interrupted. Then, you will write code to start a clock timer and again monitor the light sensor until the beam is no longer blocked by the swinging pendulum. At that moment, you will stop the timer and calculate the elapsed time in which the beam was blocked. The key to this part of the code will be the so-called while loop. The syntax for a while loop is shown here. It starts with the word while, then a set of parentheses contains a conditional expression. If this expression is true, the code contained within the subsequent curly braces will be executed. Recall that you use the while loop in the print sensor function that you constructed earlier. Here, the loop ran forever because the condition in the parentheses was simply the keyword true. Because true is always true, this while loop would never stop. The cool thing about while loops is they will run as long as the conditional expression remains true. So it does not matter if the pendulum is swinging slowly or quickly. In this tutorial, you will use readings from the light sensor to determine if the while loop should be executed or not. The best way to learn is to just jump in and start coding, so here we go. Open Tinkercad and find the circuit entitled PF Laser and Light Sensor. You should run it just to make sure it still works. Recall you can change the amount of light on the photoresistor by clicking on the component and adjusting the slider. Because we want to do more than just read the value from the sensor, comment out the call to the print sensor command in the setup function by using the double slashes like so. Now locate the loop function, which is where all the action will take place from now on. Recall the loop function will magically and automatically run forever. Next, imagine you pull back the pendulum so the laser beam is unobstructed. With the pendulum removed, there will be a maximum amount of light hitting the photoresistor. To act on the light reading, we must first grab the value of the light sensor and store it in a variable like so. Notice I named the variable light reading. Remember that the analog read function is used to get the value from the pin on the microcontroller that the light sensor is plugged into. Recall that we named that light pin. Do not confuse the light pin variable, which does not change, with the light reading variable, which will change according to the lighting conditions. Next, it is prudent to immediately print the values of your sensors to the screen. In a former lesson, you learned to do this on two lines of code, like so. As a sanity check, run the simulation and adjust the values being fed into the photoresistor. Again, they should range from 17 at the brightest and 877 at the darkest. This is how we will simulate the pendulum swinging through the laser beam within Tinkercad. Of course, these readings will differ in the lab. When you are done experimenting, stop the simulation. In the lab, even when the pendulum fully blocks the laser beam, the sensor will pick up the ambient light in the room. So, when the pendulum does block the beam, the photoresistor will read some semi-dark value. Recall from a previous video linked above that I called this the threshold value and created a global variable named light threshold to hold a guesstimated value of 60. When you get to the lab, you will alter this value according to your measured ambient light readings. We can now make use of this threshold value 
by putting it in the conditional expression of a while loop. Specifically, we want the code to be in a holding pattern while the laser is hitting the light sensor. That is, while the light sensor reads a value that is less than the threshold value, we want the code to do nothing except to take another reading from the sensor. In other words, we want to write code that will patiently wait for the pendulum to first strike the laser beam. Pause the video here and enter the code precisely as it is written, being sure to put it in the proper place inside the loop function. Can you tell what the code is doing? When the laser is not blocked, there is a lot of light hitting the photoresistor and the light reading value will be small. Our code dictates that while the sensor's reading is less than the threshold value, the while loop will keep looping. It is important to note that we must continually grab new light reading values as shown here. If we do not do this, the light reading value will not change and the while loop will never stop. Beginners often forget this step. Remember, the microcontroller will not make a reading of the sensor unless you explicitly tell it to do so at the proper time. Even though our code is not complete, Run it again now, and let's test that what we have is working. When you start the simulation, open the serial monitor, and you should see a constant stream of sensor readings, like the one on my screen here. Because the photoresistor defaults to dark conditions, the readings are large, and the conditional expression of our while loop is false because the light reading is not less than our threshold value of 60. So, Click on the photoresistor and drag the slider slowly to full brightness. Notice your sensor readings will decrease until it reaches a value just above the threshold value of 60. When the sensor is below that point, data will stop appearing on the serial monitor. This is because the readings are now less than the threshold value and the while loop condition is now satisfied, making the while loop run continually. But how do we know the loop is actually looping? We can prove this by adding a print statement within the while loop we just made. Stop the simulation so we can add code, then enter the code shown here. Make sure you place this inside the curly braces for the while loop. Run it now and notice that when the light reading is low, the sensor's raw values are now printed proving the while loop is running. Slide the light levels back to dark and you will see the while loop is bypassed once again. When you are satisfied that the code is running properly, stop the simulation and comment out the print statement inside our new while loop, like so. We do not need all that information going forward. Now imagine the pendulum is released, and as it swings down, the leading edge of the pendulum blocks the beam, darkening the sensor. This will cause the light reading value to grow larger. As soon as the light reading value becomes greater than the light threshold value, the while loop's conditional expression is no longer true, and the loop is bypassed. This means the program will jump out of the while loop and will execute the next set of commands. Let's create those commands now. You should know that a clock timer magically and automatically starts each time an Arduino program starts running. This timer is known as the Real Time Clock, or RTC for short. We can use the RTC to act as a stopwatch and measure the amount of time the pendulum blocks the beam. So we first need to write code to read the current value of the RTC as soon as the beam is blocked, like so. The initial time is read using the millis command, which is given in units of milliseconds. Cute, huh? Notice that this start time is saved as a floating point variable named initial time. Again, all of this must come after the while loop, but before the closing curly bracket of the loop function.
And of course, we should print this start time to the screen so we can verify that the code is working properly, like so. Note the units are also displayed. This is a science class, after all. Run the program and note that the output continually gives us new starting times because the light sensor starts off in a dark setting. Again, these times are just the number of milliseconds since the program started running. When the light conditions become bright, as if the laser were hitting the sensor, the time stops updating. The program is now inside the while loop and is waiting for the pendulum to block the light. The code is becoming lengthy, so let's add a few comment lines to help us keep track of what the code is doing. We now need to write code to handle the situation when the pendulum swings into the laser beam and the sensor becomes darker than the threshold value. This will be easy as we will simply repeat the above process. However, this time we will use a while loop to pause the program while the light reading is greater than the threshold value. That is, it will loop while the light reading is a large number. Remember, a large number means the sensor is in darkened conditions. Carefully add the following code to your sketch, being sure to put it in the proper location as I have done. See if the code makes sense to you. Do you see that this last bit of code is almost identical to the first bit? The main difference is the while loop in the second bit of code will run while the light reading is greater than the threshold value, that is, when the pendulum is blocking the beam. There are other minor changes, such as the naming of the variable that holds the final time, the print statement that displays that this is light reading number two, and a few changes to some comment statements. Run the code one more time and let's see if it works. It is unfortunate that Tinkercad always starts off the photoresistor in dark conditions. So slide the sensor to full brightness, ignore the garbage on the serial monitor, and clear the serial monitor. Now simulate the pendulum swinging through the beam by moving the slider momentarily to full dark and then back again to full brightness. Note the initial and final times are displayed on the screen. Do it again, but this time, pause for a few seconds in the dark, which may be due to a very large or very slow pendulum. Nevertheless, the differences in the times will tell you how long the laser beam was blocked. Here, mine was blocked for 1085 milliseconds, which is the difference between the final and initial times. Phew! The hard and tedious part is over. All we have yet to do is calculate the elapsed time, then calculate the average speed of the pendulum, and finally run it for real in the lab. I encourage you to try to write this next code on your own, for you have all the necessary physics and coding skills to do this. The only thing you need to know is that the pendulum is a cylinder with a diameter of 25.4 millimeters. If you get stuck or don't know where to start, fear not, for I will cover it all in the next video.